Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, so last week uh, we started with chapter one, sharing with Jesus the necessity and urgency. So we looked at why is it necessary to share the gospel, right? Uh, we saw that every person in this world needs a savior. Uh, so again, welcome to the online students that keep joining. Uh, and given that we begin you know, on the session, we pray to expose uh, the questions and uh, take that to answer them. Right. right. So, chapter one, we looked about the necessity. Why is it necessary to share the gospel? Right. How many of you feel it's necessary to share the gospel to Jesus about others? Do we have to do it? Or is it like, you know, you give me a church, I look up to the church, and uh, it'll be happy. How is it? Are we called to evangelize? Yes, right. The Lord Jesus himself went to many places, and he shared the gospel. Right? So every person needs a savior. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the only savior. Right? I mean, now when you look at what's happening around us, people have different kinds of ways to, you know, to express themselves. Say, okay, some go to yoga, some go to exercise, right? Uh, or we call those talks, not those dead talks, really good talks, inspirational talks. But nothing can bring wholeness other than Jesus Christ because he's the only savior. He's the only one who has died for us, risen again. Now, when this conviction is inside us, nothing can change that, right? Nothing can change that. I remember, you know, many years back, uh, I was sharing with a couple of students, I think, uh, you know, I sat in church, GPC, and I looked at the worship team, and I thought, how are they doing this? This is so well coordinated. But I thought to myself, I just know two, three chords. I don't think I can you know, reach this kind of a level. But I remember that day when the Lord Jesus said to me, the Holy Spirit just reminded me that that verse, right? You can do all things through Christ and strength. So many a times we try to do things on our own ability. How many of you have tried that? Like, constant. And you feel, I said, okay, God, if this, if, you, if I can do all things through Christ, then I want to one day play in church. Like, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going to do that. But what happened? There's a lot of practice involved. Hours of worship, practice, practicing the instruments. And eventually, you know, uh, after a few years, we began to leave worship in the church. Um, but what am I trying to get at? When we try something on our own ability, right? We may be successful, but they may not be fruit. What did Jesus say? You shall be known by your by your ministry, by your looks, what by your books. Why? You shall be known by your fruits. Right? There are many times we, we, we may be in. Uh, is, is it real now? Is it okay? Is the audio clear now? Okay, 
don't have a foot. Yeah, is it okay now? So we just switched on to the laptop camera. So if there's no clarity, I hope that's okay. But uh, audio is fine. All right. So yeah. So there's only one savior. Third point we looked at was God has commissioned us to go. Let's go. Right. God has commissioned us to go. Now remember uh, in the in the gospel, what did Jesus do? He chose seventy people. And what did he tell them? Go, do what I told you to do. That is what? Preach the gospel, pray for the sick, pray for those who are possessed, those who are oppressed. And pray for healing and they will be healed. What happened? They came back and they said, Oh, Jesus, what you told us to do, we went, we prayed for people in the name of Jesus and they were healed. They themselves were surprised. Right. Remember that when you and I are evangelizing with people, who sent you? Paul Emmanuel. Who sent you? APC. Come on, I can't hear you guys. Who sent you? You're sure about it? So the creator of this world has sent you. This one time I was in another city, I was ministering the word. While preaching the word, one demon possessed person came and stood in front of me, shouting and screaming, What will you do? I was so scared. For a moment, I said, Let's close in prayer. I want to run away from there. But immediately at that time, I just remembered this. God has commissioned me, right? My parents didn't tell me, pastor didn't tell me, but God has commissioned me to do this, to evangelize, to reach out, to spread the gospel. So all of a sudden that fear just left and the power of God began to flow. So that when I looked at, at that person, more than fear, there was love. This person, is God's child, but is being oppressed or possessed by this devil, tormenting. It's a pray, rebuke in the name of Jesus. I take authority, pray and rebuke. Amen. Right. So when our mind says, "Hey, God has told me to do this," and nobody can stop you, now, people will stop you. People will say, "Hey, you're a girl. You're a boy." You're none of them. All these things people will say, you're not a pastor, you've not finished your degree, you're not finished your, you know, you're not five foot ten, you're not a lot of things people will say. Yes, you don't know how to sing. It's all right. Because God has commissioned you. Right? I love what God told uh, uh, Samuel, right? People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. The devil knows the anointing that is inside you. How do we know this? The book of Acts. You remember Paul the Apostle goes? That's Acts. Let me just get that verse out.
Yeah, Acts chapter 19, Paul is in Ephesus, right? And then there was this, you know, Paul has already become famous, right? He has gone out, he has started churches, this is his third missionary journey, and he has planted churches, and many people have heard about him, and the ministry is doing so well. And now these sons of Sceva are there, say, okay, we will do what Apostle Paul did. What did Paul do? Pray for the sick, pray for those who are possessed in the name of Jesus, and they were healed. So the sons of Sceva says, we'll also try this. What was the outcome? The devil himself said, now Jesus I know. Why I know? Because he is anointed of God. He went, he prayed, empowered by the Holy Spirit, I know. Paul, I know. Paul, he prayed, he was anointed of God, not me, I'm also, but Apostle Paul, right? Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. Who are you? Who are you? I don't see an anointing inside you. You're not empowered by God. And so what happened? The demons overpowered them and beat them up. So demons recognize the authority that you and I have, right? So when we go out, when we reach out to people, when we evangelize to people, remember the authority that you have inside, right? The Holy Spirit authority. He's given us that authority. We have to use it, right? So we'll go to the next point, which is the urgency. We looked at why we need to share the gospel, the necessity. What is so urgent? Can we wait till we're 40? No, we have this thing, no? Now I'm young. I'll wait till I'm 35 or 40. Then I'll start evangelizing. Then I will start my ministry. And then 40 to 50, I'll do ministry. 50, I will retire. And I'll do small group ministry. Right? We have a lot of those plans. But what is the urgency in sharing the gospel? Why is it that God is saying now? Remember Hebrews 11, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's now. Remember in God's kingdom, everything is now. God does not procrastinate. Yes, there are times of waiting and preparation. He takes us through. But he expects us to begin the work now. Right? So, why do we need to witness in a sense of urgency during this time that we are in now? Especially now, you know, when we look around us, there's the anti-conversion bill, and there is, you know, people who are don't agree with the gospel. Now, if you go out and tell people about Jesus, they'll maybe ridicule you, they'll mock you. Right? How many of you have experienced that? Anybody here? Yeah. Anybody online? You you know you've uh, experienced ridicule. You know when you're sharing the gospel with somebody. How many of you? Yeah. All of most of you, right? What about the boys? Nobody have. They all accepted whatever you said. Vijay, what about you? Yes. What did they say? Ghar ko jao. Sorry? Oh. They gave you a thumbs up. A very good place. <laughs> what about other, other others? You know, in Bangalore, so many times I've gone to evangelize people and I've given them the invite, they've crushed it and thrown it. Should I be ashamed? Oh, you crushed it and threw it. What should I do with my life? No, no. What did the Lord Jesus say? I have commissioned you. Did they say Jesus come sit on the chair, we'll fan you? No. They wanted to throw stones at him. They wanted to beat him up. That's what they did to Apostle Paul as well. So when you share the gospel, first point, 
always remember you may not get a second chance right and there is no second chance so imagine when, when we die there is no second chance huh? you can't say i'll go back and change things no let's read second corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 anyone can read second corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 But if the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Right? What is the meaning of veiled? Covered. If the gospel is covered, it is covered for those who only to those who are perishing. Right? So the apostle Paul also says, no, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So what does it mean? When we are absent in the body, there's either going to be heaven or hell. That's a choice. Now the world will say we, you know, many things. We'll become, a, you know, all kinds of things. That will become a cockroach, or you can become a elephant. And another belief system says you'll become the stars. Uh, you'll become the you know, part of the solar system. All those things. A lot of beliefs. The Bible says that in absent in the body, you're either present with the Lord or present with somebody else. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this is judgment. So there is no second chance. When we share the gospel with someone, we must know that this person may not have a second chance. May not have a second chance. Uh, I'll share this example that happened many, many years ago. I was traveling to a place. Uh, I was in the train. And somewhere in my heart, I saw this person, right? And he was very confused, right? And I didn't bother, you know, usually I'm on my own. I don't talk to people. So I just, but in the night, while I was praying, I just sensed I need to talk to this guy. There's something about him. So the Holy Spirit kept saying, talk to him, talk to him. But I'm not a guy who talks to people much. right? So, But then I, I knew, OK, when I slept, I knew, OK, I have to get up and talk to this guy in the morning. I woke up in the morning, freshened up everything. And he was sitting there, and I began to talk to him. And he was going to another city for an interview because he hadn't been uh, in a job for a long time. And he lost his parents, which I didn't know. And as I was talking to him, he began to cry. Why are you crying? I knew that there was something going on. And he said, see, this is what happened in my life. My parents just passed away. I don't have a job. I have a sister to look after. And I'm doing all this on my own. And I noticed, and I asked him. He was not from a uh, Christian faith. And I said, hey, don't worry. You know, I just randomly spoke to him. But as I was speaking to him, I felt the Holy Spirit say, this is his last chance. What if this train meets with an accident? This is the last chance. So there was something in me wanting to end the conversation. OK, let's, OK, I've shared, I've done my part. But the Holy Spirit kept saying, this is the last chance. This is your, his, what if this happens? And I said, you know what? I began to share the gospel. I said, it's the regular gospel. And after about half an hour, he said, I don't mind accepting Jesus, but there's so much of failure and sin in me. I said, the beautiful part is when we come to him, it is by his grace. I'm a failure too. I have failed, I have sinned. He's willing to change us. So he accepted the gospel right then and there. Right? And we kept in touch. And you know, he's doing the ministry right now. So 
what I'm trying to get at is there may not be a second chance. What if we didn't speak to him? What if I was busy drinking tea and eating chips the whole journey? Right? So it's important to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Right? Being sensitive to where he's leading us, what he's asking us to do. Right? Two, time is running out. Remember the Lord Jesus says, time is ending. That is when, 2,000 years back. Now we are really in the end times. We are in the end of the end times. Right? Time is running out. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. God's clock is ticking. Okay, this... You know, the reason we're talking about this is not to bring fear in our lives. Some of you may think, oh, I have to still get married, have children, do so much in the ministry. It's okay. Right? Don't, don't fear. But this is truth, right? Time is running out. God's clock is ticking. Things are you know, drawing close. When we look at world events, right? When you look at um, what happened a couple of years back itself, when, you know, the president of, uh, of America, he made Jerusalem the center, the capital of Israel. Israel, right? These are all world events coming together. As as you know, as ministers of God, each one of you, you must have knowledge of what's happening around the world. Don't say I will only read my Bible; everything else is devil. No. You have to know what's happening around the world, right? Look at world events. When we read uh, the book of Revelations, you'll learn that next semester, eschatology. In the end times, you see that China and Russia will attack Israel. Right? And you see Russia and China right now are allies. They're close to each other. Russia is willing to you know, do things. China is willing to you know, it's become a mighty power in technology. Right? Russia has got is powerful military china technology exactly fulfilling scriptures right so we see that everything is coming into place the so time is running out right time is running out now, now remember this in god's eyes or in god's calendar and god's clock one day is like a but thousand years is also like Time is running out, right? So we must be quick in reaching out the gospel. James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sin. It's so powerful, right? When we share the gospel with somebody and they turn to Christ, what does it say there? You're saving his soul from death and you covered a multitude of sins. Right? And that's so powerful. You're bringing someone into the kingdom of God. It's like basically you're Taking someone in darkness, you're holding him and saying, Come into light. That's what you're doing. Right? One very important point do not be ashamed of the gospel. Write that down. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. The Apostle Paul emphatically declares that, no? He says, Hey, I am not ashamed of the gospel. The Romans are saying, you're mad. The, Greek, the people in Greece are saying, your knowledge has made you somebody else. And the Jews are saying, you're a useless person because you have gone away from the law. But Jesus is saying, Paul is saying, hey, I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm not ashamed that I have to let go of 
all the titles that I have. He was a Pharisee, tribe of Benjamin, studied under Gamaliel, commander of the temple guard, one of the most learned persons during that time. He's saying, I'm not ashamed of all that. To leave all that, I'm not ashamed. Now I'm sitting in prison. People have beaten me, mocked me, ridiculed me, spat on me. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. The moment we are ashamed of the Lord Jesus and the gospel, we lose the power of God in our words. Right? I remember I was working in the IT company for many years and uh, worked in many IT companies. And I had this desire here, I need to share the gospel with people. I want to share. But I was ashamed. So I go pray, said, God, help me. I don't want to be ashamed. But the moment you go to the office, keep quiet. Why? Because the culture is so different. Will they accept you? Will they ridicule you? And there came a time I said, God, I don't want to be ashamed. Let whatever happen. So then I began to start a small group in my company, right? in the company that I worked in. And there were about two, three people. We would meet, we would sing a song, and we'd just look, read a couple of verses. Half an hour, we'd pray for some time ago. It was good initially. Then after that, people started calling me Jesus Boy. Right? They would bring the water bottle and they'll say, hey, he like drinking some wine. Let's give it to Jesus, boy. They will, he'll turn the water into wine. They did all this. They mocked. They ridiculed. And, and that will happen to all of us. Right? Don't go to your room and start crying. Oh, they made fun of me. No. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. People make fun of you. People will ridicule. What did they do to Jesus? If you are the Messiah, get down from the cross. No. They're saying you're the Messiah. You walked on water. You brought Lazarus from the dead. Why can't you come down from the cross? They ridiculed him. They mocked him. They put a robe around him. They put a crown of thorns. Oh, king. The king is here. The king of the Jews. They ridiculed and mocked. How much more? Must we be willing, right? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Now, eventually, you will start going out on outreaches and ministering, reaching out to people, right? Don't be ashamed. When you know who sent you, you will not be ashamed, right? You'll be assured in your heart, hey, the Lord Jesus is sending me, right? Now, here's the thing. The enemy will make us feel, hey, why do you want to believe this? Why do you want to believe all this? Why don't you just go get a job somewhere, work? Sunday, you go to church, you arrange the chairs, do what you have to do. That's the enemy's work, right? He'll come and bring confusion. He'll come and bring fear. He'll change our thinking. He'll make us feel less as a child of God. That's here's where you have to stand. No amount of Bible college will help. You can't show the devil, see my BTH certificate. Can we? No. Oh. Right? He knows. So don't be ashamed. Take it on yourself to be a witness of this wonderful gospel. Right? Remember, there's a reward. You know, the Lord Jesus is not saying, you go, you do it. And if it works out, I'll good for you. No. He's saying, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. And two, when you go with that Holy Spirit, you will see signs, miracles, and wonders. And three, remember you're witnessing this wonderful gospel which has power. Right? So here's what I want to leave us on this point. Whatever talent God has given us, don't be ashamed of it. 
when you give it to god god multiplies it yes right god multiplies remember this one time i was saying god i want to lead worship i want to you know worship team and i was doing nothing but praying but i realized hey i have to do something no i can't say i want to be a worship leader and sit and pray the whole day i have to do something practically and one day i was praying and i sensed the lord saying one day i will make you play in front of thousands of people i said god first 50 people is enough you see our mindset is like that no we think small isaiah says we are small our understanding is small god's understanding is bigger and i laughed at that thought and many many years later i think 2016 or something we went to delhi we were in delhi and uh, you know vision india conference i don't know if you've heard of it there were about 20000 25000 youth sitting and um, that one of the days uh, they said apc will lead the worship now this is hindi worship right uh, we are used to english worship the hindi worship you can add one or two english songs right and there was a team from hill song that came right so hill song finished and then hill song asked uh, two three of them from hill song they asked can you join us in the team okay and we were just standing we were in the green room there uh, all of us the worship team we were all there and you know the the team they all said okay paul you lead the worship i said no uh, okay english is okay and this crowd and all it's like english songs they'll be just looking at me i said no i said no you lead you can lead hindi and worship no you, hindi and english so you lead and the moment i went on stage i saw 20000 odd people and there's a couple of them from hill songs and the holy spirit reminded me of something remember i told you i'll make you play in front of thousands of people now who's laughing but it happened so don't be ashamed when the holy spirit teaches us some things and we think too small of our, upon ourselves you think hey i don't think so. no a door that he opens nobody can shut that door do you believe that right but we have to give our talents to god no i say god this is what i have you use it for your glory if you can play music whether you can preach or whether you can evangelize whether you like to pray for people many many gifts that god gives us we have to use it for god's kingdom to bring people to christ right now by the end of my uh, the ministry that we are all doing if people are not brought to christ it's of no use is there any use right we do all of this and everyone know apc but nobody knows jesus is there any use yes or no yes or no everyone know oh yeah apc but nobody knows jesus then we have failed right so First Corinthians nine sixteen says, "For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel." Now remember, you know I was sharing in the second years. You know, after uh, I became a believer, I called some of my friends. Right? I said, "You come home." and i spoke to one pastor i said you come and you preach the gospel they are all drug addicts and you know uh, they've been living a very rough life you come and speak to them so i told this pastor this pastor came and when he came he started telling stories you know the stories about some thing that happened long back and these guys were falling asleep after the whole you know 45 minutes or 1 hour i was really upset i said god ask this person to preach the gospel and he went all over the place but he preach the gospel and now paul is saying woe is me if i don't preach the gospel 
testimonies are good miracles are good healings are good right all of this is good but if i don't preach the gospel i have not done justice to what god has called me to what did jesus do and you see all through jesus ministry he taught he preached and then it was followed up with signs wonders and miracles best example is he's teaching about faith remember that right? jesus is talking about faith he's saying if you have faith as a mustard seed you can move the mountains a couple of days later he's walking on the water and he asked the disciples where is your faith because i taught you about faith i taught you that faith is something that is, is like a mustard seed is very small but when you exercise it it grows right so these are the two points why is it needed there's no second chance and time is running out so will we take it upon ourselves right whenever we can whenever we can whenever we get opportunities you know, again i was sharing with the second years whenever somebody says they are unwell don't point them to the first medicine and the first doctor go to this doctor they are good take this medicine that is good don't do that pray for them exercise the gifts that god has given you and i remember you now just a few examples i so much wanted this you know to pray for people who are healing but every time i pray they will not get healed i said to god what should i just stick with worship right and then there came a time when i said god you work you do something right you showed signs miracles and wonders and then slowly god began to work we began to see miracles people being healed people being delivered i began to practice it and it all started off when i was in bible college you know my friends would say hey i'm unwell i'm not coming to college as you come and stand here i'd say why we'll pray for healing my classmates would say oh you're mad I said yeah i know let's pray <laughs> so i would pray are you healed no are you healed no hey paul stop wasting time you go you go to college i will go and sleep but i never gave up I keep doing every time i got headache come and stand i pray you know in bible college many things will happen yes or no my back is paining neck is paining ear is paining everything will pain in bible college right like knee is paining what didn't pain will start paining you know all that is there so i used to make them stand and exercise so we should do that exercise the gifts god has given us and suddenly one they will get up the students will get up you know my batch they'll say i want to go home i don't want ministry you go don't say who is asking you to stay then my and they would say paul you don't talk <laughs> now but what i'm trying to say is we must use the gifts that god has given us it's there inside us if we don't exercise it how is god going to help us to use it right so next time if anybody is sick online students next time is anyone sick go to zoom and pray for them and here if anyone is sick what are you going to do call for sick leave what are you going to do what are you going to pray for them exercise if they say hey you are not a healing evangelist all that you tell them just stand i will pray okay do that right so th this is the best place to exercise right this is the best place for you to learn and exercise your gifts okay let's look at the next one the second point is second chapter is what are we preaching right what are we preaching and jesus says you know when we look here uh, in the in chapter 1 we looked at sharing jesus why it's important why it's necessary but who is this jesus what is what is it that we should preach about him 
he was a good man and he did some wonderful miracles right you ask any uh, person from another faith right especially the you know these the ones which do yoga and, and meditation right you know there's a book which uh, which is i forget the name of the book uh, but in that book uh, this author writes that jesus did not die on the cross he escapes the cross he goes to kashmir okay he lives in kashmir and from kashmir he goes to nepal kathmandu and all and that's how you know they found out they the whole thing of forgiveness love all that came from okay i didn't know what to say i'm reading the book i said why there's another book which talks about you now this is the last temptation of jesus christ nicholas they made a movie it's a it's a top selling book and in this book jesus escapes the cross he gets the somebody else transfigures as jesus and dies so jesus comes down from the cross he goes with mary magdalene they get married they have children and then later on uh you know he just dies an old man now this is not made up these are real the last temptation of jesus christ is a movie and a book these are sold millions of copies so there are different people with different understandings of who jesus is some say he's a good man some say he's a prophet some say he's a miracle worker that's why jesus asked peter no who do you say i am now people are talking so many things like one is saying i'm a miracle worker one is saying i'm a prophet one is saying i'm a carpenter one is saying uh, they want to kill me so who peter who do you say i am he says you are the christ that's revelation right so what is this gospel let's read first corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 3 first corinthians chapter 15 1 to 3 Yes Amen. So, uh, online students, I hope uh, you're tracking along. So that's First Corinthians, fifteen one to three. Um, I'll read it for us, uh, for those who are online as well. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. if you hold firmly to the word i preached to you otherwise you have believed in vain now that's wonderful right paul is reminding the believers he's saying hey you all have become believers because of the gospel that i preached right now if you go back and look at how the corinthian church was birth you know paul had finished his first missionary journey he has gone to corinth and in corinth there are two goddesses goddess of aphrodite goddess of apollo now both these are you know god goddesses of one is the goddess of love one is the goddess of wisdom right so sexual immorality temple prostitution all this was open they had thousand prostitutes uh, you know, in the temple of aphrodite right and there was sexual immorality there now paul has gone there and he has preached the gospel right look at the background he's not preached to people who have come to church 
he's not preaching to a people who's uh, you know okay come paul tell what you want to say no these are places where there's idolatry sexual immorality there's hatred there is sin everywhere right the goddess of aphrodite is is a goddess where even if you indulge outside of marriage it's okay it's not wrong you're following goddess aphrodite so there's so much sin Paul is saying, remember the gospel that I preached to you. Right? He preached the gospel and they were saved because of the gospel. Paul doesn't say, remember the miracles that happened in Corinth. Remember the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is that I manifested in. Does he say all that? No. They say, remember how I shared the gospel, how I you know ministered to this person, how I no. He says, remember. That the gospel that I preached, by which you are saved. So very important point that we must take. We pray for people, we minister to people, we preach the gospel. How many of you can, how many of you can give me the gospel in two minutes? Have you heard of that? The two-minute gospel, the four-minute gospel, two minutes gospel. Just two minutes, share the gospel. So probably Apostle Paul shared it in a longer time but his emphasis was those the those who are saved are saved by the preaching of the gospel right so it says here the the message we are to preach is to preach Jesus Christ his death his burial his resurrection that's a full gospel not half gospel. Many people are following Jesus. Get what I'm saying? Many people take values from the Bible and values from what Jesus taught and use it in a secular sense. Right? But that's not what Paul is talking about. He's saying you preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That he was the Messiah. Why is death important? Everyone dies. Burial. Now, Jesus did not, you know, even in the book of John, it says that to this day, people believe that the disciples stole Jesus' body. Jesus was buried. He didn't escape and go to Kashmir. He died. He went into Joseph of Arimathea's tomb. And there's an account of his resurrection. Now, Jesus did not hide behind the pillar. Oh, I hope nobody sees me. Did he do that? Nobody should see me. I'm resurrected now. No, he didn't hide. He said he came when the disciples were there. What did he do? He said, peace be unto you. I'm here. Right? On the road to Emmaus, he, he met the two disciples. Then he met with the th hundreds of people, hundreds of disciples. He met with all of them. He told, Thomas is saying, I won't believe this. I saw that he was dead. But Jesus says, touch and see. I'm not a spirit, I'm a flesh and blood. Right? So when we preach, we have to preach the full gospel. That's where there is power. Not half, not three-fourth. Not uh, people ask you, hey, how do you know Jesus rose again from the dead? Where's the proof? Don't say, hey, wait, I'll come back with the proof. No, say, hey, the Bible teaches us. History proves that he was dead. He rose again, and history proves that he met with the disciples when he rose again from the dead. Right? There's a uh, in the book uh, Jesus among other gods, written by Ravi Zacharias. He says. They found Gautama Buddha's hair. They found, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Islam faith, what's his name? Muhammad. They found Muhammad's teeth. But what did they find of Jesus? An empty tomb. That's so powerful, right? You can't find anything there because he's risen. 
He's risen from the dead. So when we preach the gospel, it should be all three of them. All three together. That has power. Right? They can be the most roughest person in the world. They can be drug addicts. They can be, you know, uh, atheists. They can be whoever they are. The gospel is able to break their heart when you preach them. Right? Are you getting what I'm saying? Sometimes we may put a tag on people, no? Hey, this guy is a rowdy, or this guy is a gangster, or this guy is a drug addict. He's been in drugs for 20 years, so he he needs rehabilitation first, then I'll preach the gospel. Or this guy is a, you know, uh, he doesn't have parents and he went through a difficult life. So this guy, let him learn some more things in life, then I'll preach. No. Maybe somebody who's, you know, an atheist who doesn't believe in God at all. What will you do? Will you preach the gospel to somebody like that? It's not easy, no? They say, hey, there's no God. Where is God? Show me. Yeah, I spoke to so many atheists. You know, they'll ask me, where is God? I remember the story of this. So I use this story when people ask, where is God? There was a small girl. This is a real story. It happened in the West. Small girl was going to school. And her parents were good Christians. And she was also a good Christian. She was probably. Class is over. OK, guys, I'll just take five, two minutes, OK? I'll close with this. So this, this, the little girl says, uh, yeah, the teacher says, the teacher is an atheist. The teacher says, there is no God. No, so the teacher says, you go out, see the trees, and come back. What did you see? OK, I saw the trees. Go out, see the clouds, and come. Uh -huh. OK. Go out, see God, and come back. So and she came back, she, the teacher asked, did you see God? I said, no. So there is no God, the teacher said. So this girl got upset. How can it be? So she says, you go out, see the trees, and come. The teacher goes, OK. You go out, see uh, the clouds, and come. So the teacher, did you see? You go out, see your brains, and come. Did you see your brains? The girl said, the teacher said, no. That means you don't have a brain. Is it true? No. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Right? God is there. He is among us. Amen? He's there. We all have a brain. We all can't see it. God is true. He's there. Even if we can't see it, his presence is here. Right? Let's close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We thank you for teaching us throughout this session, oh God. We thank you for your empowering and your gift upon our lives, oh God. We pray, Lord, that we will truly evangelize in power and authority, that you will lead us and guide us every step of the way, oh God. I pray for the students online and even the students that are here. May your hand of blessing and your hand of wisdom be upon each one of them, Lord. Even as they learn, let them be empowered by your Holy Spirit. May your grace and mercy fall upon their lives, oh God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys, uh, online. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. Take care.